Righto. Righto, this one's called a split rock nymph. Um, it's called split because it's got a split in it. It's called the split rock nymph because I was driving past out on the western lakes where you can see split rock and I come up with this idea for a nymph which I used a lot on Little Pine. So it's a nymph, um, again, it's not an original pattern, I just modified it from someone else's in ingenuity. Um, so it's, it's your common or garden brown nymph but with a bit of a variation and I used to use this a lot on Little Pine in the lead up to the hatch. Um, so you can put lead wire in this. Um, I preferred to fish it on a heavier hook but with no lead in it. Mm -hmm. um, this one... Um, so B175. So B175. This one's not on a B175 and I'm not going to put any lead in it. Um, is that a 12 or a 10? Uh, 12 or 10. I like them on 10s because I like to give the fish something to eat. So copper wire for the rib. So do you like the copper wire for the little bit of flash that it gives or just because it makes a stronger nymph? Uh, it makes a stronger nymph but it gives that little bit of segmentation. Mm. Um, and copper, trout love copper, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to spin fish rivers, the old black and copper selda was pretty much a standout, apart from the red, gold and black, which was always the good one on a, on a sunny day. Righto, so brown nymph in the normal way. Nothing particularly special yet. Probably nothing special anyway, really. So again, I like a really dark, um, dark nymphs because that's just the colour they are. Um, now the thing about tine and brown is that trout might mistake it for a stick caddis anyway. So again with my nymphs, the same as my mayflies, um, I like to have a lot of length to the thorax. So I usually stop about halfway. Mm -hmm. That rain sounds good. It's got mylar in the pattern, so the mylar is not for the ribbing, the mylar is going in the wing case. So the mylar, it's just that thick mylar, 364, you want that on top of the hook. Because what, what I'm doing with this, I'm just playing around with that stage of the hatch where that wing case starts to split. So as that nymphs up high in the water, the wing case is starting to split and that wing's just starting to pop out ready for the, for the dun to emerge out of the nymph. In, in the pine, I, I had a, a theory there for a while and I, and I caught lots of fish on this where I thought they really were just hammering in on that easy stage where the nymph had risen up and it was just really sitting there, not doing much, while it started to break out of that nymph shuck. That was when it was at its most vulnerable. Because um, trout are like me, they're basically like a lazy feed. Um, there's a layering thing here, so it's still got the wing case. So I'm going to put the crow in as well, so that goes on top because it's going to go underneath. Making me nervous, all that beeping, John. <laughs> yeah. going to put a little bit more in that because I'm going to tease that a little bit with the velcro as well. Just wait for that to come back because the next little few steps will. I just threw one little quick whip finish in there just so I don't lose anything. Because what I'm going to do just before I flip that wing case over is just tease the legs out a bit. 
because this is the buggy stuff that will poke out each side and underneath. And that's why I put the half hitch in it, so if that happens, I don't lose the whole fly. So two stages here, crow over. But then the mylar over the top as well. So you just have that little bit of flash up on top. This is one of those flies, remember earlier this morning I was talking about that washing line technique? So this is one of those flies you'd have on that. Just sitting there, just washing around, not doing terribly much. Um, just sitting there looking like it should be good to eat.